Hi, I'm Dan from Stanton Bikes and today we are going to talk about the linkage design of our Switch FS range. So the first point to note is the egg that we have here. So the egg, I'll show you a section of it on its own, is this part. It's CNC'd from one billet of steel and it's the bottom bracket and first link pivot. Okay, and the reason that we've made the uh, bottom bracket and first link pivot one section is because we're trying to reduce the amount of lateral flex through the frame. Steel is inherently flexible, especially when you're running wall tube thicknesses like this. And we use the same tubes as we do on our hardtails. And the reason that we use them on the hardtails is because obviously they're very flexible and it means that the ride's far more comfortable. But that's okay for movement in terms of stretching the top tube and things like this. But what you don't want is loads of lateral movement through the bottom bracket on a full suspension bike. So making this bottom bracket and first link pivot in one CNC piece means that the two can't work in opposite to one another. See the first link pivot here is linked to the rear end and the rear end is obviously linked to the rear axle and then the contact patch on the floor. So the whole bike is being held by the contact patch. So what we're trying to do is make it so that the bottom bracket when you're putting power down yeah, isn't working in opposite to the contact patch. If you had two separate sections the bottom brackets wanting to waver while the wheel is stood still. So this means that you're not getting as much instant drive through the bike. A secondary point that helps that is obviously this being a CNC uh, from aluminium one block piece, the first link, I have one here. So you can see it's a solid shape from one block of aluminium. Um, and this square edge bottom part here helps brace straight through the center, which is also running a 15 mil axle through here. So, this all helps to uh, brace the lateral movement, but this is also then attached to what we have, something called the dog leg. Yeah, we have two of those. These are two CNC from one piece of aluminium. The reason that we have these, you see they sit here like this, this part. The reason we have these, either side, is to try and brace all of the lateral flex out of the seat tube. Now, one thing you might be thinking is, well, you know, lateral flex is, is, is a good thing when you come to cornering and things like this. And I agree, I do agree with that point, but I don't think that it should be through the whole assembly where the suspension linkage is working. Also, we don't want any of that to be pressing lateral movement into the shock and creating stiction. So when it comes to producing the product, what we do is, um, is we vary the wall thickness in these sections. And this is where we get the, uh, the kind of lateral flex as you're cornering and things like this, not in the assembly here and not in the drive. As you can see, the top link, this one here, is attached by this uh, CNC block of steel that's all machined out and then welded into place. This, if you think about it, is right in the cut of this joint here. And then the other, this obviously is one section, but it's also right in the cut in the joint there, which means that it's bracing the whole thing laterally. This whole assembly is about trying to take as much lateral flex out of the front end as possible to increase direct drive. Another point to note, is that the drive side and non-drive sides of the rear swing arm, if you look, can you see that, are actually separate. We didn't go through the cheaper option of welding a section through here. We've gone for three 15 mil axles and a 12 mil axle to hold the whole assembly together. This means then if you come off your bike and smash one side and dent it, you're only swapping one side. This also meant actually that we had to hold tolerances really, really high in this product. And this is why Jordan's here. And Jordan is the person that's done all of the engineering drawings and held all and created all of the tolerances and this, that, and the other for the assembly. So one of the things that you'll notice is there is literally no slack in this whole product. It costs more to hold these tolerances and get the machine shops to, hold, to, to work to them, but, well, you'll notice when you ride it. So when it came to the design, we had to consider the fact that we live in the Peak District and it's absolutely filthy here for the majority of the year. So what we have in our assembly with very well held tolerances is um, SKS bearings and then a rotary seal that lays over the top of the bearing and then the spacer that then marries up to meet the bolt. So this means that literally no crap can get in there. The whole assembly will last you a, a long, long time. And also remember the frame comes with a lifetime warranty as well. Every single part, including the axles themselves, the bolts are all uh, machined and made for us and are also designed in-house. The whole product is made in-house. So 
where do we go from here? Well, let's talk about the actual suspension kinematics themselves. So why do we go for a dual link system? Well, we know that that's the best system simply because it offers rear wheel movement in the axle path. Why do you want that? Well, because if you're clattering down a run and you have a single pivot, as the axle's held in one place uh, and the pivot's here, every single time it's hitting an object, it's hitting it and pulling straight over. Bang, and pulling straight over, okay? This means then uh, the point of reaction of the, of the wheel moving backwards or the pull on the bike is happening across your chest every time. Whereas what we're doing with, on this model with a dual link system is it's able to move backwards in its arc as it comes round. So this rounds off all the edges, which means that you're not bracing it in your chest. It means that the bike's actually doing that job for you, which means you're less fatigued. And obviously that's a, a great attribute to a enduro bike. Another great attribute to our Switch FS range is the high anti-squat. What does this mean? Well, what it means is that as you put power down, rather than the bike trying to squat through the center with every pedal stroke, what's happening is, because it has a variable instant center, so the instant center sits between these two pivot points, as it has a variable instant center, it means that when you're putting power down on the pedal, the rear wheel is pressing itself into the ground. So that means that you're getting far more instantaneous traction. And with the whole assembly being so highly toleranced, you have no slack. And then on top of that, because the whole assembly is bracing all the lateral flex within the front end, it means then that the entire amount of your power into the bike is going directly into drive, making this bike a beast on acceleration. On top of that, it makes it brilliant for climbing, because obviously it means that every pedal stroke you're doing while sat in the saddle, you're not squatting like that with every single pedal stroke. Not only does it have those attributes to its uh, suspension kinematics, it also... Uh, is a progressive system. So the suspension kinematics have the progressivity designed into them, which means that you don't have to run small little progressive air can shocks. You can run big linear shocks like this or coil shocks. Um, this means basically that what's happening is that the rear wheel is moving at 2.2 millimeters to every one millimeter of the shock. And then it progressively moves to one millimeter, one millimeter. This puts less force on the shock and basically means that the shock doesn't overheat and also means that the shock has a more consistent feel to it. You also don't have to stuff your shock full of tokens to try and get progressivity in the bike because the majority of bikes nowadays are designed linear. This is designed progressive, which means it's designed for shocks like this. And remember, this product is entirely manufactured and finished here in Derbyshire by us guys. And if you want to demo one of these, we're on every single platform and we contact super quick. You can arrange to come down here and take a bike out anytime during the week or on one of our Stanton Saturdays. Okay, so there's a lot more to talk about with this product, but as it stands, this video is just to cover the suspension kinematics and the linkage system itself. If you'd like to know anything more about our products, ask us a question in the comments below or drop us an email or even contact us through Instagram or Facebook. And remember to like and share and subscribe and all that other stuff that YouTubers say.